This is a special I-Team documentary, Prisoners of the Harvest. I've wandered all over your green growing land Wherever your crops are, I'll lend you my hand On the edge of your city, see me and then I come with the dust and I'm gone Slavery was abolished after the Civil War, but its echo continues to ring through the fields and groves of the rural South. It is migrant farm worker slavery. The legal term is involuntary servitude or peonage, a crime seldom exposed because its victims are usually too afraid to talk. But after five months of investigation, we have been able to penetrate that silence. We now present a rare glimpse inside one migrant slave camp told by those who lived there and managed to escape. Theirs is a story of violence and brutality, of poor, illiterate farm workers, mostly black and elderly, who say they were literally kidnapped off the streets and forced to work against their will. Their words may be difficult to understand, but their story is not. These men are migrant farm workers. They move with the seasons. Most have spent their lives picking the fruit and vegetables Americans eat. The work is hard, the hours long. Huh? The pay, very little. Some of these men are sick. Many are alcoholics. This is their story. James Williams, 63 years old, sick with tuberculosis. He says this man, Willie Warren Sr., a farm labor contractor based in Orlando, forced him into a van at this work camp in the farming town of Lothman, 60 miles from Tampa, in the heart of central Florida. And he told me, say, get in that wagon. I said, Daddy, ain't going back to Lothman. And you get in the wagon. I wound up again, I was in North Carolina. Why did you get in the wagon? See, I know that I was moved. I know that. I couldn't have whipped them by myself. I know that, too. I didn't have nothing at all in my pocket to keep him off of me. I know that. I didn't have another choice. William says he was freed from the camp only when his tuberculosis got so bad that he began to cough up blood. Grab him in my car and throw him back in the truck. Len Gaston, 64 years old. He says he was trying to hitchhike a ride to the store when he was picked up by a passing van. But instead of going to the store, he says he was taken against his will to a cucumber field. The driver was one of Warren's men. What'd he say? No, you ain't going nowhere. You're going to stay here with us. Whether you wanted to or not. I didn't have any choice. The crew leader was Willie Warren Jr., the son of Senior. Gaston says Warren Jr. forced him to work 15 hours a day, seven days a week. The pay? Less than a dollar a day, much of it in cigarettes and wine. Gaston says that when he tried to escape from the camp, guards caught him and brought him back. He says Warren Jr. was waiting with a rubber hose. He whooped me with him. I couldn't walk him about two or three weeks. Where did he whip you? All over. These men are not alone. Other migrants told us that they were kidnapped, beaten, and forced to work by the two Warrens. They come back up in the ground and start hitting them, push them around, and throw them in the van. And they hit me with a bottle on top of my head, and they threw me out the back door. They were not grab me, you know, brought me back over near to the camp. And they they make a slave out of me. I couldn't stand it. Other farm workers from Florida to Philadelphia told us about being kidnapped and beaten by the Warrens. The stories are the same. Workers stopped along the road, forced against their will into a bus owned by the Warrens, then driven to remote work camps throughout the South. There, workers say they were beaten, plied with wine, and kept in a constant cycle of debt and fear. People on the chain gang get along better than that, and they didn't did a crime. George McMahon says he was actually sold like a slave. 
from Warren Jr. to his father. And his dad had him the money, so we, we had to go do what his dad had said do. He ain't had to pay attention to the son no more. You had to do what the dad had said do, because he didn't pay it for you. It's a type of situation which is incomprehensible to people who haven't come in contact with it before. David Rubman is a legal aid lawyer. He represents migrants who work for the Warrens. This man said to me, my great-grandfather was a slave. My grandfather was a slave. I don't want to be a slave also. And so these descendants of slaves became slaves themselves, not a slavery of whips or of chains or of the auction block, but a bondage of another more subtle kind, an economic and psychological slavery of broken men with tuberculosis, alcoholism, helpless and sick. Some that they bring back there, they wouldn't even much know where they'd be at. How did I get here? When did I get here? Who brought me in? And they go looking for hands and all that down highways and different other towns. They put three or four cases of wine in there. You drink? Yeah. Yeah, get you a couple of them bottles over there and all that <laughs> And uh, if, if you tried to escape, what would happen? They'll pick you up and bring you back there and whoop you. And you saw that? I've seen that. I really see that. Everybody's scared of him. Because he get his crew to whoop their asses. Farm workers say that after being kidnapped, the Warrens took them to isolated work camps, like this one in Central Florida. Why didn't you just run away? Run what way? Are you going to run away? and don't know where you're going through the woods. Try to slip off from the camp, man. It's just like, try to break out of jail. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta wait and you gotta bide your time. And you better be right. You better not get caught trying to slip away. Then you gonna get hurt. I would say thousands of people are being exploited. Thousands. Sister Catherine Flynn is a nun who has helped farm workers escape from the Warrens. She says the Warrens isolate workers in remote camps in order to control them. And as the camps get further and further from the road, then they are king of that camp. And they can kidnap, beat, threaten, do anything they want. And no one is going to do anything. Workers say that because they were so isolated, they were forced to buy food from the Warrens at high prices. He chosen guys forty dollars a head just to go get food stamps. Match it to give away, Matt you have to pay five cents a box for them. And you actually paid a dollar for a piece of soap. That's right. Because of the high prices, farm workers stayed in constant debt to the Warrens. It became a vicious cycle. The more they owed, the longer they stayed and worked to pay off their debt. And the longer they stayed, the more they owed. Well you stayed in debt with him all the time. I mean, he, I paid him, but, you know, he ain't never given no money to I can't work and get working. Oh, he claimed we owed him. Did you? No, well, I couldn't see what I owed him for. Say, what the hell is this? James Moffis gave us pay receipts showing how his debt carried over from week to week. Moffis told us he didn't understand how he got in debt to Warren. I, I still don't understand this. And because most of these folks are, are honest and they grew up being honest all their lives, they believe, well, if I owe a debt, I'm going to pay it off. And that if I pay it off, he'll let me leave. There's always a carrot being held out in front of them saying, if you pay it off, you'll leave. And these people believe it. We tried to talk to the Warrens about all of this. I'm going to take that camel ass from you. And you're going to get out my mother. You're out my mother. I found your mother in that ditch. But they wouldn't answer our questions. In fact, the next day, a friend of the Warrens threw hot water at us, then hit me in the head with a pot. I had to get stitches in the emergency room of an Orlando hospital. Migrants who work for the Warrens say that kind of violence is common. They're adamant about what happened. Now, mister, my father reached out in him. He know I'm telling the truth. And I can swear that on seven stacks of Bible. Because, see, I've been there. I know. 
In early October, the state attorney's office filed battery charges against the woman who attacked me. A warrant has been issued for her.